Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is once again from the North American King of the Hill, played in November 2022. Upper right-hand corner, we have Artosa starting as the blue Terran. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Hawk starting as the white Zerg. This is on Vermeer. It is a recast for me, because actually in the middle of doing this cast live on Twitch, got a call from a car mechanic, because I had car issues. And speaking of kind of cars and stress and everything else uh, along those lines, you know, it's been a crazy series of years, and I have to say the Twitch audience and... You guys out there in YouTube land, uh, I really appreciate all of you. Been able to get back into casting and had, thankfully, BSL replays to do, these replays to do, some Korean stuff on StarCast TV, and being able to go back to commentary has really been beneficial for me. It's kind of a meditative thing, and I just wanted to say everybody, to everybody out there who's listening and who's a regular viewer, I really appreciate all you guys and all the support this last year and the last previous years. And uh, I'll keep doing it as long as I can. I'm not sure how long I'm going to have the these pockets of time to do it. But as long as I have the ability and time, I think I'm going to keep up with it just because I really enjoy it. I enjoy bringing this to you. I enjoy being part of something bigger, which just feels like StarCraft in general and just having that shared love of this thing, which is watching StarCraft. Anyway, Artosis versus Hawk should be a incredible matchup. Hawk has a very, very strong versus Terran play. He's arguably the best player in North America currently, has that reigning title from the previous season of BSL, is scooting out, although that might there might be adjustments in that considering more recent play. You could make arguments for Boa being the top. Uh, you could make arguments since he qualified in the surprise tournament. I'm not sure if Hawk put in time to that. Looks like he's opening up for a 12 hatch, by the way. But extremely amiable guy. I definitely recommend checking out his stream. Incredibly intelligent guy. Artosis has incredibly strong versus Zerg, though. So there are this could be a what if sort of scenario. What if Artosis had made it into BSL season 15? I have a feeling looking at the later stages of the ladder for BSL 16, he is gonna make it this season. And I am hyped for that. So this is also potentially, I'm not sure if Hawk is participating this season round, but it is potentially a look at what Artosis might be able to accomplish in the next season of BSL. And he's gonna have a lot of strong Zerg opponents. Zeke's out there, I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of other Zerg that are Squall might be up in those ranks as well. Of course, you have a plethora of strong Protoss, so that might be a cause of frustration. He's opened up Rax, has a supply, uh, supply Depot alongside, is scooting along forward, sent out an early SCV scout, I think because he wants to go one Rax potentially into Command Center, if he can pull it. And as this SCV scoots around, sees the 12 hatchery, and he has saved the minerals to go ahead and plop down that Command Center. It looks like he's not going to cancel that second Marine. And uh, he's going to drive back that drone, but I think that drone got just a look at the edge of the SCV there and that command center. So Hawk seeing it, and actually Hawk opting to go for an in-base third hatchery. And what was great is actually in the middle of some of these matches, I got to have a long protracted conversation about explicitly the 2.5 hatch or three hatch play and its resurgence and kind of variations on it. One thing I do love about it is the earlier, it gives a little bit, I think, more map control earlier on, depending on how many mutalisks and zerglings you feel, but you have the extra larva to work with. And I kind of like the style of play. Granted, you have to work to go ahead and get that third base and main sh uh, make sure you have map control, but I feel like just the way it plays out, because you have that extra larva to build, build a few additional zerglings, things like that, it puts you in a position in the mid game, particularly when they attack on that evolution chamber, get plus one carapace to make those zerglings a little bit more survivable in the mid game. I, I feel like it uh, puts zerg in good positions, and we've seen, we've seen motions towards it quite a bit lately. It looks like we are seeing a tech delayer here. Artosa sees the timing of the Zergling scrambling, doing some damage. In the meantime, no bunker on the front, just the four Marines, since he's got all the spotting information. I think seeing this, Artosis has said in the past that he felt like this particular build was more or less negated, that three hatch play in general was more or less negated by the early plus one weapons, five racks play. I'm expecting him to field that here. We'll see how it ends up playing out for him. The Zerglings did manage to get that SCV kill, one on the left scoring it, and it looks like we do have that Evolution Chamber in the natural expansion, as well as that Extractor to supply a lot of gas in the mid-game. Hawk has incredible Mutalus Micro, so Artosis is going to have his work cut out for him before that plus one weapon finishes, dropping the Academy behind this, so it looks like, yeah, it's going to be plus one weapons upgrade, that stim pack upgrade, and then a slew of barracks. And I kind of like this in particular for Artosis at a cross spawn position, even though there are more larva to work with, this is a large distance to cover to get from Hawk Space to the natural expansion. And I take it back, we have a Hydralis Den here. So tech delayer, Hydralis Den pocketed in the natural. And on top of that, because of the build Artosis is executing, he is probably gonna skip that commsat station 
There's the second and third barracks plopping down. I'm wondering if he is just going to stick to the second and third or if he is going to go up to five. We'll see as the minerals float in, what he opts to do. Another SCV floating out. So we are at least seeing four. Another SCV out. So yeah, I think that's going to be the, for the fifth. But this is going to slow down having that commsat station so it could very likely catch Artosis by surprise. So going for Lurker play to start. Evolution Chamber getting that plus one carapace as well. And against the plus one five racks, that actually slows down double starport and some play along those lines makes it come out a little bit later in comparison to other builds, I believe. And as a result, this could be very, very strong for Hawk. So there's the comsat. I'm not, he does, I think now see that Hydralis den. Let's see how he opts to respond. Has all of his Marines and medics out, pushing out on the field, Zerglings making the way out on the field as well, but not venturing out too far. Hawk grabbing his third base nearby. That is going to be his fourth hatchery overall. Still hasn't tacked on lurkers as of yet. So we got the five racks up, plus one upgrading. Has cleared out his front. And now Artosis has, yeah, dropping bunkers. So he saw the Hydralis then. I think he's wondering if there's going to be an all-in lurker bust at this stage. So a slew of Zerglings and lurkers just to cram into his natural expansion. That is something that a lot of Zerg players will do. But here Hawk is instead opting to play it more defensively. So as two Zerglings to spot, should the Medic Marines start pressing out, and three Lurkers out on the front, and just relying on the fact that he'll have overwhelming, uh, basically an overwhelming attack force to deal with anything that's pressing out there before Science Vessels are in play. Machine Shop dropping as well. Double Machine Shop, so it looks like Artosis is thinking about playing Mech versus this. Siege Tanks do in fact range Lurkers unseaged, so they can be big benefit, but as things stand, Hawk is going to be able to get this additional base up. He will be able to get a third gas. More Zerglings moving across the field. The Lurker is moving up, and Artosis basically has to sit back because the whole position Lurkers could be absolutely anywhere out on the minimap. Looks like he's running, hunting down the Zerglings. I think Com's heading forward a little bit just to be careful. I'm not sure where that landed, but I heard it uh, pop off. Now, this is here's the thing is, is there are five Lurkers out in the field. You've got two control groups of Zerglings behind this. He can potentially dive on this Medic Marine attack force. So Burring right there comes down to some unit control. A bit of a stim there from Artosis doing a good job spreading, but dropping a third bunker, still expecting an all-in from Hawk, but Hawk has in fact grabbed an additional base and has actually filled in his drone count quite solidly. Now rushing in with an attack, the, I believe his plus one finishes, Firebats behind this. Sending Artosis back, and although Artosis was thinking, okay, maybe this is the all-in right now, instead he's stutter stepping back, holding position, and Hawk is happy to keep him more in kind of a soft contained situation. St Starport up, science facility being built, which likely means we're not going to see a science vessel out there until near the 10 minute mark, and that third gas is going to be up and running well, at, uh, well into the time period where Hive Tech is already up, a Spire evolution, second evolution chamber, and I'm guessing the Defiler Mound will be out pretty rapidly. So it's going to be double Evolution Chamber to keep up with the upgrades. It looks like a first Siege Tank is out. First Science Vessel in production. I might have had the timing off on that. It would have been nine minutes instead of ten minutes. I'll get better at that as time progresses, hopefully. Siege Tech being upgraded. The barracks are, in fact, glowing. But that third gas is up. An additional hatchery now in place. And supply count's fairly close, fairly even. And on top of that, you got that plus one weapons, which helps negate that plus one, or sorry, plus one armor, which helps negate that plus one weapons on Artosis' side of the field. However, two siege tanks are out. I think he realizes he hasn't been busted. He's in a pretty good supply situation. He knows effectively where these lurkers are located. And he might get a good shot as the Defiler Mound's just now coming online. So comms heading forward. Let's see if Hawk just goes ahead and backs up out of this. Yeah, just dropping that. Artosis has to be a little bit careful he doesn't chase too quickly, otherwise he's going to end up out of detection range and dropping a unit. Where'd that science vessel go? Looking for the science... There it is. So now Artosis starting to move out on the map. This could be a prom, uh, prime location to attack, uh, particularly if he comes across from the 9 o'clock angle because there's not a lot... Of, well, granted, Hawk can try to pincer from both directions. He's got to come from flat angles rather than a complete surround. Three siege tanks out, a lot of medic marines, some fire bats alongside. The fire bats can help negate Dark Swarm as well. Sun uh, Creek Colony being dropped, I assume, potentially to get a sunken, and now the timing as Consume is being upgraded. Not there yet, and Hawk only has, what, six lurkers out on the front? 
Supply count's looking a little bit more even, trying to drop some defenses. This looks like very minimal defenses. Gonna try to hold position this, maybe to buy some time. But here you can see the siege tanks, in fact, Ooh, Artos is losing his control, loses a few Marines for free, but a Lurker dies in, uh, along its stead. Now the Zerglings chasing up, more Lurkers moving up alongside position. This is without any Dark Swarm support to try to buy time for both Consume and Lurker Tech to come online. All of the Lurkers now going to go ahead and back out. Eight Lurkers in the fold. Sutton Colony behind this to try to defend against this big push from Artosis. And it looks like he does want to take that northern angle. Defense Matrix on the front, some Scourge alongside, potentially to pick off that Science Vessel if it wanders too far forward. Sortosis is going to have to be very, very careful with his control. Consume looks like actually Plague being upgraded, so Consume is finished. I don't see any Defilers out on the field as of yet. And the Lurker count starting to dwindle, but there, Dark Swarm and the Lurkers able to peel forward. The Fire Bat's not joining the fray, and it looks like three of the Sea Shanks at least exposed, so they're going to take some fire as they're backing out. Hawk looks like he's held it and feels confident enough that he's grabbing the six o'clock base as well. Siege Tank's peeling around looking for another angle. The splash still hits the lurkers. It's just kind of at an offset, so it can be troubled. Trying to reposition along that other wedge. The Scourge being driven back by the Marines. And now some additional Zerglings. Actually, there's a Nidus at this corner. Some Zerglings look like they might want to angle from the north as Artosis is pressing in from the angle of the natural expansion. Firebat explodes very rapidly as plus two Carapace is now online for Hawk. Five siege tanks shelling along that edge. Dark Swarm and very minimal defenses though, sweeping in to go ahead and clear this out. Able to at least pick off one siege tank from the south. A lurker looks like it might be able to get a second. Yes, manages to get a second. As the three siege tanks are now backed out. So Hawk still holds three gas. Potentially has a fourth if he can establish that base. Artosis has taken his third in the meantime. Still has a lot of supply, but more units flooding through as Dark Swarm being dropped. And I kind of like what Hawk's doing, kind of hiding these units back behind the Nidus and only pulling them out at the last second when it looks like Artosis is about to commit to avoid a radiates or additional uh, potential siege hits from these siege tanks. A lurker coming in from both directions, another swarm being dropped, and it's gonna be, yeah, oof, gonna lose the siege tank out of that, maybe an additional one. So only one siege tank remaining on the front. Artosa is now backing off. Marines clearing out the three o'clock position. I'm not sure if Artosis realizes that the six o'clock base is in fact up and active and you have Zerglings and coverage at all of the other bases just to make sure that Artosis didn't swing an additional two. Oftentimes what Terran will do in this situation is grab an additional two bases, macro up from there. Looks like there has been another command center that's been built, plus one weapons also being upgraded there for the mech. And it, I think he wants to float it down to this three o'clock location. Overlord is nearby, potentially could float in and spot that. I think Hawk's gonna let it ride though, as he is establishing this six, and that is going to be plenty of gas four gas to work with, potentially to make his way to Ultralisk. And keep in mind, he, yeah, dropping some macro hatches behind this. And keep in mind, he's already got a bunch of Carapace upgrades. He's going to hit Carapace 3 very, very early. Some Zerglings swinging in, confirming that, yeah, this is the position that's being take, uh, being taken. You can see, well, plus two weapons is here. Actually, no armor upgrade for Atosis. Had to cut into the armor upgrades to get the mech out earlier. But that's allowing these Zerglings to be a little bit more effective now in the late game. All sorts of hatcheries out. There's the Ultralisk Cavern for Hawk. He's got that fourth gas up and running. Artos is going to sit back and try to macro off the two additional bases he's taken and play some positional advantage from here. Science vessels across the three o'clock, sweeping around with these siege shanks, trying to find any hole position lurkers potentially. Looks like some Zerglings got splatted as they were near that natural expansion. The problem for Artos is here, though, is that Hawk has managed to keep a sizable drone count. He is near even on the worker count. And as Zerg starts to fill in and macro up, that usually ends up being kind of the doom point for pretty much any race they're up against. Artos is continuing to kind of filter forward. It looks like he had kind of like a cross map position. However, there is a flanking attack of Zerglings and Lurkers. And if Dark Swarm ends up in that natural expansion, it could be very, very scary. Two siege tanks are going to get wiped out. A slew of science vessels look like they're going to be able to clear this out. However, Dark Swarm is dropped. Two Lurkers in place. That bunker might take some damage. Some Vultures trying to get out in the field, maybe to plant some mines to soften up those ultras before they arrive. Zergling's going to swarm the area, hop in the Dark Swarm initially. Plague. I'm not even sure where that plague came from. Able to hit those siege tanks to the south as the Zerglings were able to clear that first bunker and sweep into that natural expansion. Vultures going ahead and cleaning that up, but not before the Zerglings are able to attack some damage and at least take out a single SCV. So... 
Artos is just working on the weapons upgrade, which is going to make, I assume, to try to keep up with Hawk's armor upgrades. I don't know how well that's going to work out as Carapace for the Ultralisk is starting to filter in, and you have a bunch of Hydralisks Plague. Essentially, Hawk has every tool that he needs to win this match. He's also going to go ahead and grab this bottom right-hand corner. Artos is starting to swarm that direction. The base is not yet grabbed, but just a couple lurkers on the ramp could make this a very difficult position to sweep in and take, at least without a radiate support. Looks like there are a lot of science missiles there to potentially drop a radiate. Repositioning, starting to sweep across the other corner. Hawk moving some units straight caddy corner across the map, potentially to go for an attack at the natural expansion. Maybe not realizing where Hartosis' attack force is. Siege tanks pocketed in at the three. If these get breached, that potentially is going to open up Artosis' third base. Mines clearing out some of those Zerglings. It looks like reinforcements might be able to cut out the rest. Artosis now threatening the six o'clock base. The lurkers have been wiped out. Dark Swarm trying to sneak in, and a bunch of her radiates drop every direction, but, and ooh, the Medic Marines getting wiped out as the Zerglings continuing to create trouble. More plague being dropped at the natural. They'll be cleaned up with, with what's left there. But there's still siege tanks, a medic marine force, and some science vessels now pouring into the six o'clock base and that will disrupt Hawk's fourth gas. Scourge starting to press forward. Looks like they are going to be able to take out two of those science vessels. But I don't think that's worth losing a base for Hawk. Hawk is grabbing the nine o'clock base behind this. He has not yet grabbed that bottom right expansion. The six o'clock looks like it's going to get wiped out. And that's the precious fourth gas that potentially was going to allow Ultralis to take the field. That being said, Hawk had enough of a bank to already field six Ultralisks, now working on speed, and he's already got that f plus five carapace behind it. And keep in mind, with the lack of armor upgrades, these Marines are going to be very, very, very weak. And actually, it looks like Hawk, last second, pouring in some Lurkers and Dark Swarm, is going to be able to save the six o'clock base after all. Incredible. Medic's getting wiped out. Let's see if now... Yeah, he's going to go ahead and grab some Dark Swarm. Let's see if he moves out and starts attacking this 3 o'clock base to follow things up. Hawk grabbing the bottom right. The 9 o'clock is already up and established. This could be an additional gas. He does need to get drones back in the 6 o'clock to get mining, but he's got to feel confident with this amount of Ultralists out in the field. Some Zerklings... Zerklings? Zerglings. Escorting a Defiler out, plaguing some units at the 3 o'clock. Good mine coverage to the north that will help keep the Ultralisks softer, assuming that Zerglings don't sweep and clear those mines. That's what Hawk is up to right now, trying to find any mines and attack forces out in the field. These units, yeah, they just get sneezed on and they die after that plague. So very rapidly cleared out there. Looks like they might want to take a shot here at the 3 o'clock. However, the bunker is in place with four additional Marines, but more units streaming across, mostly just Zerglings. You can see, yeah, they're just going to... Looks like some Ultralists died to the mines midfield, but yeah, just doing some mine clearage, playing Minesweeper with their faces. Ultralisk mid-map. Supply count's now even, which usually puts the Zerg ahead. Three Ultralisks diving into the three o'clock location with a lot of upgrades. Need some Irradiate support, some Vultures making their way bottom right. The hatchery just online. The Zergling swinging around from that location. Gonna provide some support on the assault on that three o'clock. And the Ultralist now finally diving into that SCV line. One Ultralist being left to buy some time and SCV is just absolutely getting obliterated here at the three o'clock. Artosis moving down to go ahead and reinforce because he needs to play the long-term macro game at this stage as Hawk is running. Looks like he hasn't grabbed the gas, but he's running at the nine o'clock. He's pretty well saturated at the six o'clock. Bottom right hand base is in his control and is even on workers. Ooh, science vessels also getting picked off overhead at the three o'clock. SCVs retransferring from the main, but it looks like they're gonna get caught mid-path by these Zerglings. However, are the Zerglings gonna be able to chase them down and are the Zerglings gonna continue on the path? It looks like no, they're gonna slot in to Artosis' third, start chewing through SCVs there. And the Siege Tanks now, if they take shots, they're gonna be doing splash damage against their own units. Fortunately, medics are right there to try to keep the SCV lines alive. Ultralisks have slotted in with some Dark Swarm. At the three o'clock location in the meantime, there's a single siege tank there to defend. Nothing in the bunkers. The SCV is just gonna have to flee. That's forcing a lift off. We have some starports down, I assume to build battle cruisers, but Artosis hasn't been able to get them fielded yet. Ultra is dragging some mines now into Artosis' third base. And now things looking scary for Artosis' Hawk is starting to swarm dangerously close to his natural expansion. He's 
These are two critical mining bases that are very quickly slipping out of his control. His main is mined out. His natural expansion is nearly mined out, so he needs to keep these two bases, and he has active Zerglings sitting in the SCV field. That medic actually might be there intentionally to try to keep SCVs alive. And now you have a just a beeline of white making its way across. No mines in between. The first battle cruiser out. I don't know that that's going to make a difference against all of these Zerglings. I heard some additional science vessels getting blown up, I assume, by Scourge mid-map. Arthos is able to clean up the attack that was at his natural, but is very much pinned back as more units starting to stream ahead for Hawk. Zergling's getting cleaned up as the attacks are coming in piecemeal, eating some Plague, though, and Dark Swarm. Some Overlords scooting in, I assume, to provide... I'm not sure what to provide there. Maybe some detection, just try to keep an eye on what sort of supporting units are coming from to give Hawk an idea of what soft point he wants to start throwing units at. Natural expansion is being defended by two battle cruisers and a science vessel and nothing else. A defiler in there, able to drop yet another swarm, and there's a bit of a trail of swarm now. For the next few seconds, if units rush up quickly, they can again sneak into the natural expansion, and the battle cruisers are not going to be able to do anything. Ultralisks making the way there. More battle cruisers attempting to get built to provide some form of defense, but that natural expansion now breached. This base untouched. The 3 o'clock location is not relanded in the meantime, so no mining, and Hawk is mining all over the map. Artosis' supply count plummeting. More battle cruisers coming out to try to do something, but it feels too little too late. And it, you can just have some follow-up plague. It looks like Hawk actually plaguing his own units to hit both battle cruisers there. And shortly has lurkers near the ramp. Now some scourge moving up. One battle cruiser down. Second battle cruiser still in the air. More battle cruisers being produced. But Zerglings are on top of the barracks, which should be it. Ultralisks have managed to sneak in. Artosis is no longer mining. That is GG. Well played by Hawk, top to bottom. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, thank you guys for everything. The Twitch audience, YouTube, as we're getting towards the close of the year. I appreciate all you guys. Gonna get an aya out to the uh, Twitch stream. Thank you for listening.